sitting down to work on it right now. You don't want to paint the top of the cabinet? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That'll be fine. All right, well, I'll talk to you later. All right, take care. Bye. Well, this is gonna be fun. This project was very much a labor of love. My friend had brought this over to me to complete because she'd gotten it for free actually in the back of an alley, which is pretty cool. And it had sat in the garage. She really didn't have the time to do it and hadn't gotten around to it. So she had asked me to refinish it for her. So here's the piece itself. There's a lot of veneer missing and a lot of damage. It looks like maybe an animal got to the corner of it. Um, and the top has really bad water damage to the point where the, the veneer itself was flaking off the top so that's gonna be a lot of work to take care of the handles are also missing so we're gonna have to fix that as well one of the unfortunate side effects when drawer pulls like this are missing and it's a top-down open cabinet it's very hard to open up and pull open you can see there was a string on top of this that was actually used to open it so I mean not a really big deal just grabbed some pliers and popped it open you could also use a flathead screwdriver to pop the top open as well I just didn't want to scuff up the piece first things first I'm gonna remove the old hardware I am gonna keep these they're like little flower poles just in case I come across something else that needs one or is missing one and I want to reuse them um, so I'm just going to unscrew those and set those aside in my collection that I'm filling up very quickly. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to clean the cabinet. I'm going to use Crud Cutter. It's a de degreaser. You can use a lot of different products. Uh, I happen to have Crud Cutter still on hand, and until I use it up, I'm probably not going to switch over to any of the other TSP cleaners that I have in stock right now. So I'm just gonna go through this one and probably use this for the next several projects because it tends to last a while. Um, and then once I spray it down, I'm gonna wipe it down with the microfiber cloth so that we can get off any grease or oils that have been put on the cabinet over time. Um, this is a pretty old cabinet, so there's quite a bit of dirt on it. There was an extensive amount of filth that had come off just using the crud cutter so I went back with warm water and a sponge and I'm just wiping down any of the excess crud cutter and grossness that was left on the cabinet. When I say this cabinet was a labor of love I truly mean that. So you're going to see that I peeled off all of the separating water damaged veneer from the board on the back of the cabinet and the reason that I did that was because the inside of the cabinet on the back the finish was already matching the inside and the inside was in great shape so instead of popping that off buying some backer board trying to color match it instead I decided that I would try to peel off all of the backer board that was water damaged. Now, I could have also just taken the route of, oh, well, I'll just paint over it. But if you watch, it peels off really easily, which means that over time, it's probably going to continue to separate if it's subjected to any humidity. I don't want that to happen. I would rather have this cabinet last for a long time. So instead of doing all the other options, I chose the route of peeling the veneer off. 
And actually, it was probably one of the most satisfying pieces of this whole project because for whatever reason, when I used a screwdriver to insert between the two substrates, it made a weird crackling noise that was really cool. And I'll see if I can get a clip of that in here for you guys to see. So after I'd taken the veneer off of the back of the cabinet, I wanted to take off the peeling veneer on the top, at which point I realized the damage was pretty far deep into the cabinet. Now, there's two ways you can go about this. You can try to sand the top. I actually did try that. It wasn't giving me good progress. Um, I eventually ended up getting a rubber mallet with my chisel that I purchased from Lowe's and chiseling off most of the veneer, two layers of it, in fact. And I'm a little sad because the veneer that was on top of it was really beautiful. And so I really wish that it wasn't water damaged and I had been able to use it. Um, and then when initially I was given this cabinet, the understanding was the damage was pretty extensive on the top. So we're just gonna end up painting it. I had assumed that we were going to just need to peel off the veneer and then use some filler, but that was not the case because the water damage went all the way to the center of the top. So we had to go a different route here. So after I had chiseled and sanded and chiseled and sanded, I had finally gotten down to the third layer of wood, which is really pretty. It's pine and it's really soft. And the problem with using a really sharp chisel when you're working with really soft wood is you're likely going to ding the wood. So what I had done is I came back with some Varathane wood filler. It's a two-part wood filler and it smells really strong. So if you use this and you've never used it before, just know that it smells really, really strong. And it also dries really quickly, but it's really nice for surfaces like corners and tops. Um, and because I had chiseled so much off of this top, which I'm kind of ashamed of, if you can't tell, I went back and just filled anything that I could find where there was unevenness in the surface on the top. So once I mixed the proper ratio, I went ahead and just quickly filled in as much as I could on the top. And then I also went ahead and filled in the gouges on the side where it looked like an animal had chewed on it. I also went ahead and filled the handle holes on the front of the cabinet so that I could put in new hardware. And then once everything was all dry, the wood filler on the entire cabinet, I went back with 120 grit sandpaper and then sanded everything down until the surface was even. Um, I go a little overboard on the handle holes, especially when you have those wider base handles because what will happen is they press into the wood and you'll get little indents around the actual hole, so I always put in extra. Um, another thing I want to call out here is I used probably a little bit too much and you can see the kick up as I'm sanding. Um, it created a fine dust powder all over my garage. So make sure that you're wearing a mask whenever you're sanding, even if you have dust collection. There's still dust floating around in the air, and trust me, you don't want to be breathing that stuff in. It's not good for you. I ended up going back and hand sanding the finer details of the project just so that it would remove some of the shine and protectiveness. I'm going to end up painting this, so I just need to scuff sand it and make sure that some of the finish is off and there's something for the paint to adhere to. After I was done sanding, I cleaned everything off and then I separated the inside from the outside of the cabinet. And here's where the fun part comes in. So 
the top was too damaged to just stain and try to use that. It's also a soft wood. So what I had ended up doing was I ordered some veneer off of Home Depot's website. It was relatively inexpensive. Um, I got a whole sheet of it and it's paper backed veneer. And if you're not familiar with veneer, it's just a thin slice of wood. And this was all one sheet, so I didn't have to join the two pieces together, which was great. Um, and all I had to do was cut it to size and use some contact cement to attach it to the top of the cabinet. Now, if you're not familiar with using contact cement, make sure that you do this in a very well ventilated area. It is highly flammable, so do not use this anywhere you have an open flame. Um, make sure you read the can. There's a lot of safety instructions on it. And again, don't do this anywhere you have any kind of open flame. If you light a candle, it's not a good idea. Don't do this inside your home because it will smell like contact cement for the next two to three days. Trust me, I know. When you're applying it, you want to apply one coat to the back of the veneer, make sure it's as even as possible, and then another coat of contact cement to the top of the furniture piece that you're trying to attach it to, and then you let it dry, and then you apply the second coat, and you let it dry, and then what's supposed to happen, if you've done this right, your humidity and everything, it's not too dry, it's not too humid, is when you set the veneer on top of the furniture, it's going to have both contact cement sides bond together. So after I laid it on top, I used what's referred to as a J-roller and I start from the center and I apply even pressure so that we get good contact between the two surfaces. And you wanna make sure, I think it's like 75 pounds per inch or something rather. Um, you also notice I have excess that's intentional because it's better to have more and then if I had kind of not put the top on correctly, which is very possible, um, it still covers. In fact, on the left side, I had far less veneer and so it was kind of my saving grace that I had more on both sides so that I made sure to cover the entire top. When you use contact cement, you don't have to put any weights on the top, unlike if you were using wood glue to attach the veneer to the top surface. Um, so once you've applied the J-roller pressure, which honestly I went over it probably for 10 minutes with a J-roller, um, just let it dry. And then you're gonna wanna come back and trim the excess. I used a box cutter and just flipped the table upside down and then scored the edges. And then after I got all of the excess off, I went back and gently sanded the edges and the top to prep it for staining. So I'm pretty particular about making sure that my stain color is cohesive to what I'm painting something or just trying to get the color that I want. And because I had excess veneer, uh, I went ahead and took pretty much any stain that I thought might be close to it that I had in storage and just made myself a little sample veneer piece so that way I made sure that the color that I wanted um, was used and that way I'm not layering stains on uh, and and I I mean I have the excess why not use it right after looking at the results of my veneer strip I went with Varathane wood stain dark walnut and I applied only one coat to the top of the cabinet and that was pretty close to what I wanted for a color. It's going to deepen as I put on the sealant or wood finish. So when I put on my wipe on polyurethane, it's going to darken the color a little bit. So it was perfect. I wanted to seal the top because I'm going to end up taping off the edges. So I wanted to put a coat of wipe on polyurethane on the top before I put the tape on so that I could paint and get crisp lines on the corner. I really don't like using tape, but if you're applying tape to a surface, it's a good idea to have some kind of clear coat over it, especially veneer or um, any raw wood surface. 
because what will happen is the tape will actually bond with the wood and with the veneer it has the potential to have the tape glue or residue get on the surface. So if you put on a top coat, it typically protects the wood from having the tape glue seep in. So the color for this project was bare paint in black evergreen and it's this really like deep green with a little bit of blue undertone. Um, and the funny part about this is that the person that I was doing this cabinet for had asked me to use their paint. And I said, well, I actually have this can of dark green and can you send me what the color name is for the paint that you used? And she sends it to me and it's the exact same. It's literally the exact same paint. So it's pretty funny because I had had it. And if you think about all the different colors that you can pick on the wall when you're trying to pick out paint colors at Home Depot, there's a lot. So the likelihood of this happening is very, very coincidental. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my zebra two inch angled brush for this project. Um, that'll help me just get in all the little corners and details on the cabinet itself. After I had finished painting the entire bottom part of the cabinet, including the front door, I went into the inner portion of the cabinet and I'd end up filling the little holes where the record wires had been. Those are long gone. And I wanted it to have a really clean look, so I went in with some bare black paint and just painted the inside of the cabinet black. So here's the special surprise. I really wanted this cabinet to have something unique and be special and just kind of have something that made it different. Instead of just being a green painted cabinet with a black inside and a wooden top, um, I wanted it to have a little bit of uniqueness. So I ordered a star stencil off of Amazon and was super excited about it. I watched two or three different techniques for how to apply stencils. Um, I was kind of set up for failure. I, I knew that going into this, I had a bad feeling because the stencil itself had been creased when it was shipped to me and it's a very thick plastic, not something that adheres to the surface itself. But I persisted anyways. And one of the first stenciling techniques that I saw and wanted to try was applying the first coat of paint using the same color that's on the background. And I'm using a makeup sponge to do this. And it's supposed to stop bleed through before you apply the next color. It did not. Um, I went and applied this really nice golden acrylic craft paint on it using the same technique. I applied two coats of it waiting for it to dry in between. And after I had ended up removing the stencil, I realized the error of my ways. But again, kind of had that feeling that this wouldn't be perfect. So we have a backup plan. I ended up just going back in with a paintbrush and kind of filling out the lines and trying to smooth things over a little bit. It's still not perfect. I like crisp lines. Um, and they weren't that crisp, but hopefully she likes it. Hopefully. <laughs> I ended up running to Michael's and grabbing some Elmer's Craft Bond to apply to this one side of the stencil. You have to wait three to five minutes so that the surface becomes tacky and doesn't adhere permanently. So I sprayed a good generous amount to it and it worked out quite a bit better on the second round, but it was still kind of blurry and I ended up coming back in to touch it up. So after everything had dried, including the stencil, I applied a coat of polyurethane over the paint and the inside of the cabinet. And I went and applied probably around six coats of wipe on polyurethane to the wooden top to give it good protection. And let's take a look at the final product. 